A British spinster decided to show the reality of dating at her age, but still blames men for her lack of choice of suitors and uses high standards as a coping mechanism to deal with the fact that the men she wants don't want her. Sit back and enjoy this future reality most modern women are going to face, especially when their beauty fades or they get forced into hoe retirement with a younger version of themselves. The title of the article is, why can't a glamorous midlife woman like me find a decent man? Despairing divorcee, 58, has auditioned countless suitors with comically disastrous results. The title implies that this grandma, if she really is 58 and not older, is a catch, when in reality, the title should be, Why a used up triple post wall spinster can't find an attractive successful man to commit to her. Or, Desperate divorcee. 58 has auditioned but comically got pathetic results. Or, bitter grandma divorcee realizes she fucked up getting a divorce and that no one wants her. Kim Thompson clutches a piece of paper in her well-manicured hands. On it, she has written the names of boyfriends she met while dating online. Unless if she was actually in a relationship with those men, they're not boyfriends. This seems to be a tactic to try to increase her value, their suitors or failed dates. She talks to me through the list. First, there was complicated Chris, followed by Ben who was a disappointment in bed, and strange Tim who had a habit of talking non-stop about his collection of Hornby toy trains. Complicated Chris sounds like a guy who's not committing to her, yet is probably getting the bedroom fun with her. Women will call a guy complicated if they can't tell if he's really into them or if he has the upper hand in the relationship dynamic. Ben sounds like he did everything right except be a porn star in bed. But how do we know he couldn't get hard because she looked like a dried fruit when she took off her clothes? Or the rejection of Ben says either the man she's looking for has to have a big dick or he has to be a slayer in the bedroom or probably both. She claims she wants a boyfriend, not a hookup. But somehow she found out that Ben wasn't a disappointment in bed. This is why used women are only qualified for the bedroom, if that, because they place a lot of importance in the bedroom. But before we go any further with the video, let me share the comment of the day. Anansi the Spider referenced a part from yesterday's video saying, Can you all imagine if a man sat on stage and said, I like to make women feel uncomfortable. I enjoy making women uncomfortable. Can you imagine all the backlash you would receive? I'm really glad he pointed this out. I had the same reaction when I found this clip. Absolute delusion. So please, don't forget to reach out to us by email to claim your $5. As usual guys, I'll pick one comment from each video. It may be the funniest, the most liked, or just one that touched me. So don't forget to leave a comment and you may be our next winner. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons too as it helps out a lot. Now, back to the video. Embrace your masculinity. A man can do everything right but come up short because she's a dead fish in the sack and expects him to do everything there too. What she means to say about Tim is that he isn't physically attractive. He's a nerd. She can't say that out loud because then she outs herself as having very high standards. But if Tim were to be a Chad who happens to like trains, she'd talk about him in glowing terms on how unique he is and that it's a breath of fresh air that he's not the average bloke getting drunk at the pub and watching football games. Already we know she's trying to pick out the Chads and Tyrones, but on dating apps, they aren't even seeing her as they have an age limit of mid-30s. Then there was the property developer who took her out for dinner, slopped spaghetti down his front, and told Kim on their first date how much he liked sex. There it is. She finally meets the guy she's qualified for which is only bedroom fun and she's passed him up because she wants a full commitment. Or he's the guy she's secretly having flings with while she tries to find her ideal man, who will never commit to her. There are lots of others too, whom she came across when she turned to internet matchmaking sites to find a long-term partner. Internet matchmaking sites are hookup sites. 
Please don't portray me as a manhunter, she begs, perching on an immaculate white sofa at her home. They seem to be either liars, hopeless in bed, had a mean streak, or had a former wife hovering in the background. She is a manhunter, because there are no men that she's attracted to, beating down her door to be in a relationship with her. It's funny how women always say, don't judge me, but will instantly disqualify a man because he has baggage from his previous relationships. In normal times, Kim has a good job running an architect's office. At 58, the divorcee owns a three-bedroom house in a smart London suburb and looks 10 years younger than her age. You would expect her to be pursued by a string of eligible men. The girl boss has everything except for a committed relationship. How surprising. And the author Sue is lying. Kim doesn't look 10 years younger. She looks her age at the very least. The eligible men are able to get 20-year-olds if they're rich, so why would they want spoiled milk when they can drink it fresh? Yet, earlier this year, Kim reluctantly made the decision to give up on love and romance, scarred by two years of trying to find a man online with whom she might actually want to form a long-term relationship. She's finally coming to grips with reality that if she ever has a chance with a guy she's attracted to, it's only going to be for bedroom fun. She's speaking up now because she wants other women to know that internet dating can be a fool's game. These young women have no problem with internet dating. After half a decade of having no significant other, and she freely confesses no sex, she turned to online dating. With all her friends long married, there was little other options to meet single men. Maybe she should have listened to her married friends and stayed married. There's a reason why they stayed married because they realize they're lucky to be with a man at the later years of their life, as so many younger women are giving up sex with very little commitment. But like Candace Bushnell, author and creator of the blockbuster TV series Sex and the City, which charted the 1990s New York dating scene, Kim found the whole experience a bitter disappointment. Movies and TV shows aren't real life. They're fake. That's why they're fiction. And Candace Bushnell herself admits that she wished she would have settled down sooner to have kids because now it's too late. The woman who inspired countless women to sleep around essentially invalidated her life's work. Candace, who sampled internet dating to research her new semi-fictional memoir Is There Still Sex in the City?, told the mail in a recent interview, it was just shockingly sad. There was such a lack of quality men. There's not a lack of quality men. There's a lack of quality men who will give these spinsters the time of day, yet alone an actual commitment. Candace cited the example of Arnold, a frisky, sexist, septuagenarian who declared when giving her a tour of his home, including the bedroom, I've had a lot of great sex on that bed. I hope to have a lot more in the future. And no man wants to sleep in a bed that has DNA stains from other men for the past 30 years. Her bed is like a cheap hotel room at this point. Candace blamed herself for failing to find love on the internet, saying that at 61, she is probably too picky when it comes to men. Men are also picky. They don't want anything that's past the expiration date. That is not an expression Kim recognizes. Why not be picky, she asks. I found there were too few decent ones to pick from. That was the trouble. Kim didn't answer the question. She doesn't want to lower her standards because she still thinks she's a catch. Kim's internet dating adventures began in 2018. Divorced for 15 years and the mother of 28-year-old twins, she'd had two relationships since her marriage ended but by then had been single for five years. She's been in three failed long-term relationships and she's expecting men to look past that? She has a small circle of good friends, most of them married but rarely sees a fresh face, particularly a male one. Welcome to the common man experience, where most women don't notice 60% of the men out there. Her office-based job and site visits to mainly family homes mean her chances of bumping into a new man are slim. She explains, I was pottering along happily single, until two years ago when a girlfriend said, you don't want to be alone for the rest of your life, and suggested I try online dating. When she claims she's happy, that's a massive lie. Otherwise, why would she try to change her quote-unquote happiness of being single by looking for a man? She admits, 
I was quite naive. I thought the men were looking for what I was looking for, a committed relationship, possibly marriage. I couldn't have got it more wrong. Translation, she thought men would be chasing her, but not even 70-year-olds are looking twice at her. Financially self-sufficient, she says she was keen to find a go-getter, someone who had achieved something in his life, who was educated, had old-fashioned values, and would join her on adventures exploring the world. That well-rounded renaissance man is either doing that alone or traveling the world with his wife or hot young girlfriend. If she couldn't get an educated go-getter in her prime, or at least be in a long-term relationship with him, what makes her think she'll get him when she's way past her prime? Instead, what she says she found, having tried a range of websites including Match.com, Bumble, Tinder, and Zoosk, was a generation of men who were economical with the truth about their looks and lifestyles, relentlessly bitter about their ex-wives and looking for sex or to find a woman who would support them financially. What massive projection. It's whole generations of women who are average looking at best thinking they're tens. And the men have a right to be bitter, since half of their wealth was stolen through divorce and child support. At this point, she's gonna have to be a sugar mama. The men will have a series of pictures on their profiles, and the initial ones will often be decades old, when they've got hair and no paunches, says Kim. It's only when you reach the last picture that you might get something of the truth. A balding, overweight man with bad teeth. Let's see her dating profile and see if she has filters to make her look young, or if she uses old pictures of her or MySpace camera angles to make her look thinner in areas. She continues, I met one for a coffee after seeing his photo with blonde hair, then chatting to him on the phone. In reality, he had gray hair and a pot belly. He was 20 years older than he looked on the dating site. I just said goodbye to him on the spot. That's why, before going on to date, people should go on a live chat to make sure no one is catfishing. They post pictures of themselves with their children to make themselves look like good family men when, in reality, they have no intention of settling down. Or they'll pose by a Mercedes or a yacht, and knowing what I know now, I'd be very skeptical whether they actually owned them. Women didn't actually own the homes or the cars they drive because the government helps them steal those in the divorce. There is little sense of chivalry left either. I'm happy to pay my way, but in the old days, men would have offered to pay for your dinner. Very few do now. One man I met for coffee actually stood back when the waitress asked who was paying. He didn't even go halves with me on a coffee. Internet dating is like a sweet shop, so men will show interest in hundreds of women, but I don't think they really want to follow it up. They're always looking for something better. More projection. 80% of all the divorces are initiated by women because it's the women who claim they can do better. There's something called breadcrumbing where a man will throw out crumbs of interest in you, a message every so often, just to keep you interested in him. There must be some lovely men out there who are genuinely interested in having a committed relationship, but it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. I have no idea how you find them. This isn't a treasure hunt. Those men have free will and obviously they don't want to find her. At times I sat at home crying. I asked myself what I'd done wrong. Am I too old? Am I unattractive? Of course, she is neither of these things, but listening to her litany of romantic disappointments, it's easy to understand her discrepancy, especially as it had all started so well with her first internet date. Women white lie to themselves and each other all the time. Yes, she's too old and unattractive. She has almost no value in the relationship market unless if she wants to commit to 80 and 90 year olds who need someone to change their diapers. Although she felt dejected, Kim was soon dating again. This time, she hitched up with Ben, a 58-year-old hedge fund manager from a trendy part of London who had a two-bedroom flat. He was, at least, divorced, she says wryly. We were on a level playing field financially and he was a university graduate who had studied classics. I'm really interested in ancient Rome, so when we met for the first time at a restaurant in Richmond during the afternoon, we chatted about it for ages. He was a good conversationalist. Afterwards, he walked me back to my car. He kissed me on the lips. When I got home, 
he texted me asking if we could meet again that same night. We walked along the river and stopped at a pub where we both had mineral water. He was a strict vegan and I don't drink wine, so again, we were on the same page. She got her hopes up with Ben, whose hobby was going to jive dancing classes, asked her to stay overnight a few weeks later. He appeared the perfect gentleman, says Kim. We had a Thai meal, talked about the Romans, then went back to his flat. But when we climbed into bed, he just turned his back on me. He showed no interest in being intimate. The next morning, he said he was sorry. He said it had happened with his last girlfriend and if we tried again a few times, it might get better. She hoped their sex life would spark up. It never did. There was always the same dismal outcome. It was embarrassing for him. He had some difficulty in that department, she says now. Not surprisingly, she let their relationship fade away. That says that Ben couldn't get turned on when she took off her clothes, as in she's not attractive. If a man really wanted to screw but had difficulty in that department, he'd take Viagra and risk going blind to have sex. She concludes, rather sadly, screwing up the list in her hand into a tiny ball. I don't think I will ever find love again. The rest of the article is a waste of time. She just wants attention and rants about the same thing. If the reporter wasn't there, she'd be talking to herself. What do the comments on the article say? Top woman commenter said, I totally relate to this lady. My experience of online dating has been the same. The men lie about wanting a relationship. They just use it to surf for sex. Even if you start seeing a guy, they're still on there looking at other women. They're just kids in a sweet shop. I would never try online dating ever again. The funniest thing is, men lie about their height. I'm 5'8 and met a guy who said he was 5'10. He was shorter than me. Leave love to come naturally. Another bitter old spinster, nothing new. And women lie about their looks all the time when using makeup, or use push-up bras or spandex to hide the beer gut. Angels commented, she is a very attractive woman. Funny, intelligent, but to be honest, she is too good for the men she met. Stop looking, enjoy yourself. Then it just might happen. Good luck to you. Not sure if that's a man or a woman, or a woman pretending to be a man to boost all the cat lady's egos. I remember the saying, there are plenty of fish in the sea. Well, there aren't. All the good ones get married young and when you get older, you get left with the rejects. We're the ones who are bitter, or with lots of emotional baggage. Be content on your own and maybe someone will come along. If they don't, so what? If there are any young women hearing this, quit while you're ahead because this will be your future for the rest of your life. And since women live longer than men, you'll be a cat lady for 40 years, till you're in your 80s. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you'll get 5 bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video. Till next time.